Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello dear learners, welcome to this online course on legal language, legal including general English. This is lecture 15. I am Dr. Divya Gupta, an assistant professor at GLA University, Matra. Today we are going to study concession, clarity and cogency. That is the simplicity of structure. So we are going to learn what is the importance of different aspects of language writing legal language writing. When you draft any legal document, any law register, there has to be some kind of format, there has to be some kind of fundamental principles on which the whole thing depends. So in that condition, my concern today we are going to learn that how through words, how by using words, building blocks you can say, you can definitely create a beautiful creation. Now in this way, I would like to take you to the journey where you would learn how to make your words a very, you can make your law registers, maybe statutes, writing case studies, sometimes case laws, criminal laws. In that condition, you can definitely draft it in a wonderful manner with concise, conciseness, clarity and cogency, which is really very, very important. It lends simplicity to your words to your work specially. So let's move up to the next thing that what are the learning outcomes? When it comes to the learning outcomes, remember my dear learners, after completing this lecture, you all will be well equipped to produce high quality impactful legal documents for string better communication and understanding within legal field. That is again a very important thing my dear learners, you all will be able to learn that how within that legal field you would be able to draft a perfect example of any law document, legal document I should say. You would be able to develop advancing legal writing and proficiency. That is for sure without any hustle and bustle appropriate thoughts with accuracy, you all will be able to draft that one. Further, you will be able to develop the critical thinking skills because everything depends on your brain. Everything depends on your, uh, your, your attitude towards the aspect and you should know that whenever it comes to that aspect, you must know that it must have a gist, the summary, the idea which kind of idea does it try, is it trying to convey and please focus on this aspect that whenever you write anything or draft anything, make it very easy for the readers, for the audience to understand. For this you need to focus on the status of your audience, whether you are going to approach the students or the people who are peers, suppose if they are your peers or your juniors, so it depends. If they are your peers or your juniors, obviously there is a less need of using legal maxims. But on the contrary, if you are writing it to some judge, some judiciary person or some person from the legal background who is senior to you, in that condition you will write, use legal maxims, you will use a little bit of legal terminologies because these things are again really very important. Clear everyone? So this is again a very important part where you have to focus. Let us move up to the next part that what are we going to learn in this, the contents basically. When it comes to concise work, when it comes to concise, they are, there are around three C's where we are going to focus now. When it comes to concise part, remember first of all we will learn what do you mean by the concise nature? What do you mean by that? part, when we say concise, when we say clarity, how are we going to bring that? So what do you mean by this? 
then these are fundamental principles of legal writing they are fundamental principles of legal writing that means you are trying to come up with something which actually lays the foundation of your uh, drafting and they are fundamental principles of legal writing so these are really very 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 important further there are few examples of drafting fir i have taken some example of fir so as to make it very much clear to all my dear learners that you can definitely hit the goal by using these fundamental principles and draft a wonderful uh, piece of work after that what are the methods of legal drafting you would learn that how these methods of legal drafting will be used or will be employed over here then brief writing and case laws again i have used these specimens where you can very easily understand that how these case laws would be written with the help of clarity with the help of certain fundamental principles how brief writing is done so all these things will definitely compile together to form up a new one clear everyone so now in this condition we shall move up to the next part and the next part goes on to the category where you have to understand certain things let's move up to the next part that is introduction what do you mean by that first of all i told you that who is the author who is the author right once you have identified the author then you should identify the audience who is the audience now once you have identified these two things remember the author is from legal background and the audience is also from legal background then your perception changes right and then in that condition right if that is quite busy and working like if your uh, audience if i say let's talk about the audience if your audience is busy right if your audience is busy and working against some and working against deadline what will happen in that condition you must actually learn to make it more precise this will lead you to the precise work you will learn how to make it precise remember then you would secondly you would talk about certain things which are legal documents legal documents basically talks about to be direct it has to be direct easy to understand because what is the golden rule of it easy to understand and read and read so you must understand that all these legal documents should focus on this aspect that it should be easy to understand easy to be understood by the audience and it is to be uh, like uh, this legal do document should be direct not beating around the bush and delving deep with the details and uh, like uh, using extra words redundant words which are not required maybe most of the time so that actually brings about a lot of time taking task and it makes the work it makes the work tedious and boring to read also so remember that this is a specialized form of writing used to legal profession used in the legal profession including legal documents contracts briefs memos court opinions there are many effective legal writing is characterized by clarity precision and adherence to some certain fundamental principles that we have understood we have to understand that why these and how these clarity how can we bring clarity to it precision to it adherence to the certain principle fundamental principles so now you have understood this aspect and remember that legal writing is always a specialized is always a specialized a specialized writing this is not an easy going thing which you can definitely work out or maybe you can write in a colloquial language you need to have focus on all those legal maxims on all those legal terminologies on case laws on statutes on regulations on legal precedences you must have you must acquire the knowledge or content of all these things before because that before like i mean to say without those things you would not be able to draft a perfect example or you can say 
uh, perfect example of any law report yeah so let's move up after introduction what are the basic things that brings about a clarity so here these are few fundamentals right these are few fundamental yes so these are few fundamental principles of writing now in this condition what is the first thing that you should ponder on clarity how are you how are you going to bring clarity in it clarity means that you must have the clear and easily understandable language and especially talking about the audience you must talk about the audience and it should bring about the simplicity it should bring about the simplicity of structure remember it should bring about the simplicity of structure now in this condition simplicity of structure by basically talking about three things first of all accuracy right then you are talking going to talk about brevity and third you are going to bring about clarity right so these three things you are going to focus by bringing this simplicity of structure now further you are talking going to talk about precision how are you going to br bring uh, precision in that work now legal documents must be precise and unambiguous this is again a very important thing how are you going to bring it or make it unambiguous by deleting those redundant words right so avoid vague ambiguous language that could lead to multiple interpretations basically when it comes to any word like talk about any legal maxim if i talk about any legal maxim remember like if i say if i take up this word r e s res ipsa law q ter so this is legal maxim right now in this legal maxim if i talk about this res ipsa locutor now what is the meaning of this res ipsa locutor that means the things speaks for itself what is the meaning of this the things speaks for for itself so this is a legal maxim remember this is a legal maxim where you are going to understand how these legal maxims should be employed in a work when you are very much perfect about the meaning then only you would be able to explain it and understand it in a proper manner right so that is called how you are going to bring about a precision in that work and when it comes to precision part remember that you are going to avoid you are going to avoid redundant words point number 1 you are going to uh, try to make it less ambiguous why less ambiguous because that will give multiple interpretations remember so precision the key point of precision avoid redundancy redundant words and uh, less ambiguity to it let's we talk about organization for which organization are we going to work now in this condition you must know that legal documents should have logical and well structured organization typically legal writing follows a clear structure and statement of issues for example if i say uh, if i talk about anything say if suppose if i talk about case law we'll talk about these case laws fir there has to be some kind of format brief writing so we have certain format to it we are going to follow the strict pattern the strict uh, format the strict uh, you can say layout to draft that fir to draft those case laws to draft those law registers you are not going to use your own uh, personal like way of dealing or expressing your ideas no so that is organization of thoughts organization of thoughts you can say in a better understanding yes you can understand it then further we move up to the next fundamental principle of writing that is brevity brevity while precision is essential legal writing should be concise avoid unnecessary repetition or wordiness right so instead of writing uh circum locution instead of writing circum locution let means like in lengthy words in a way you should try to ya write modern terminologies modern terminologies in that condition 
in our uh, few previous lectures and upcoming lectures also I have already described this circumlocution. So, please be very particular about using uh, modern terminologies one word or two words uh, instead of using the whole phrase. So, that is uh, just uh, you can say replace those circumlocutions with that modern technologies modern terminologies. And further like yes of course, when you talk about uh, legal writings please try to use legal terminologies with them, legal terminologies right, they are really very important. Further say what you need to say as a few words as possible without sacrificing clarity, it must convey the idea the clear idea to it. Then last uh, uh, again like uh, not uh, talking about too many legal maxims at a time otherwise that will also create ambiguity and so the excessive legalese will definitely avoid excessive legalese right. So, this is again a very important point you should ponder on this aspect use headings and subheadings whenever you come up with draft first draft there then second draft and third draft. Now, in this condition what are you going to understand is then first draft this is the first one where you will draft collect all the ideas where you will collect all the facts clear. Then second draft where you would try to come up with the exact version or uh, you can say compile those facts and compile those facts with format with format with format third third draft would be the final draft third draft would be the final draft. So, you must actually try to come up with certain parameters final draft after showing it to peers peers and after uh, rechecking it twice thrice you can definitely submit that to the final uh, authorities. So, use of headings and subheadings should be there. I am going to tell you how to draft uh, the brief writing there are few methods also where you can draft the whole thing in the form of sometimes rows and columns, sometimes in the forms of rows and columns, sometimes in the forms of writing the uh, whole thing on uh, left hand side and like I mean to say the topics and on the other side you can write down certain uh, words certain meanings of those uh, sentences. So, in that condition they provide you an elaborate idea of writing a brief uh, content of drafting a brief content you must have the uh, th through and through idea of uh, doing it. So, further we are going to take you to the next slide where you would learn that how citations are done. Yes of course, in my previous lecture also I have already explained you how to go for citation. Citations should be done in like when it goes to blue book uh, uh, like uh, reference the blue book according to it you can definitely try to write down the citations by using blue book pattern. Yes, I have already explained it. So, yes blue book ALWD citation manual or the specific code citation rules. So, depending on the context proper citation of the uh, like crucial for legal documents proper citation is actually important like if you have taken something from some book you must refer it with. So, what are the things that are required in that name of the author then you must try to write down of the case these are like uh, not in the same sequence obviously, but you have to collect all these things publication publication year publisher publisher ok. So, there are different types of uh, then volume number page number many things are available many things are actually required for it with proper punctuation proper punctuations remember ok. So, please refer to uh, the lectures the previous lectures where I have discussed the citation styles also that how are you going to cite statutes, how are you going to cite case laws, how are you going to cite some regulations, how are you going to write uh, uh, like uh, refer or cite some books or journals for articles. So, there are many ways through which you can definitely cite citations uh, cite different statutes and different law registers 
right and and even the full form and sometimes the short one and as a footnote also there are differences between them so please uh, refer to that one because this is again a very important thing legal authority now which legal authority am i going to consult so whenever possible support your arguments with legal authority such as statutes regulation case laws legal precedents so suppose if you are trying to write down uh, something the uh, try to come up with legal precedents sometimes like when i talk about legal precedents you have certain rules certain uh, like uh, cases law sometimes like when it comes to case laws there are two types of laws yeah first is landmark cases landmark cases and the other ones are recent cases right so recent cases when it comes to landmark case you can give the example of keshananda bharti case you can talk about ak gopalan case you can talk about adm jabalpur case you can talk about vishakha uh, versus state of rajasthan case you can talk about uh, parmanand katara versus union of india case so they are landmark cases remember i told you that whenever you are referring to any authority you must talk about these case laws they are very important and yes of course regulations and acts also when it comes to acts you must know that there are many many acts there are many acts there are many fundamental rules also along with that M many fundamental rules for example like fundamental rights we have if i talk about fundamental rights although i have discussed in several other lectures also but you must know that whenever we talk about fundamental rights we have right to liberty we have right to uh, property we have right to speak we have right to vote we have right to marriage we have right to property many other rights fundamental rights right to live so many fundamental rights please try to focus on all these exemplifies like i am to say whenever you talk about legal writing come up with proofs on the basis of your yeah, foundation on the basis of which you can definitely exemplify that no or or give the authentication that no whatever i am speaking is true to my knowledge and it has already been proven earlier so please be very much particular about this that whenever you come about with any kind of uh, law register drafting please be very particular of using these legal authorities sometimes statutes mention mention these statutes which are required regulations which are required case laws which are required legal precedents which are required you can talk about several cases that i have already discussed earlier uniform civil code you can talk about recent cases many other like this last yes of course you are not supposed to come up with personal opinions avoid using personal opinions because they are really very important when you involve yourself in that that will definitely lead to uh to to that kind of uh, feeling where people will not be able to correlate you or find that kind of feeling that you have come up with your facts only you must come up with actual facts without your personal opinion nobody wants to know about what you want to say you are people are there to understand and hear the actual fact the actual happening the actual event which are related to it so you cannot actually add subjective pronouns to it you cannot add first person or second person to it try to use third person pronoun every time and then you are avoid being very personal and very emotional in that so let's take up a take up look of this on this be objective as i told you free from personal opinions and stick to facts legal arguments and relevant authorities so whichever authorities are involved in that like suppose if i say the authority of environmental environmental protection protection act now in this condition when we talk about environmental protection act i'm going to refer this relevant authority only while talking about the pollution control pollution control right so i must have the details of all these things that these points are really very important when it comes to protection act in the same manner let's move up to the next part where consistency consistency means like following the idea consistency in terminology formatting and citation style regularity regularity it must not have the things where people throughout the document it should not consistencies can confuse the 
reader. Yes, of course, if you talk about certain things like uh, legal terminologies, do not you can say flush this uh, document with lot many uh, legal document legal, legal terminologies, try to come up with less of them with a proper formatting. You cannot actually come up with any kind of format which is not required. Audience awareness that I have already told you, you are going to tell whether it is a peer group that is going to judge you or is it your junior. So, according to them you there has to be a different kind of perception and if they are uh, judi judges, if they are judges or uh, from judiciary someone, someone from uh, legal uh, area senior to you obviously that will make a different kind of uh, perception. So, your language, your tone, level of details to the readers background and familiarity with legal concepts will change clear. So, this is again a very important point where you have to be very much particular about it. Use of examples, provide examples or hypothetical scenarios to illustrate the complex legal concepts. As if in the coming uh, session I am going to discuss FIR, I am going to discuss deed, I am going to discuss case law, brief writing. Now, you will be able to actually I am going to uh, give you some hypothetical scenarios on the basis of which you are going to learn how these things are done, right. So, you will learn all those things on the basis of those hypothetical scenarios although you can apply all those things, all those uh, like uh, uh, you can say the characters, the situation, correlate them with the real life situations but that is coincidence. Like I have tried to come up with all those things in an uh, in, in such a manner where they are fictitious and if there is a, some kind of like correlation with the real incident that is of course uh, may be possible. So, try to give examples this is very important when it comes to concise work, when it comes to appealing work, impressive law reports. So, concepts, arguments making them more accessible to the readers, accessible to the readers may, uh, may be so that they can definitely correlate with them. They can correlate with them and then further they can correlate with them and they can definitely uh, use certain other uh, uh, like you can say methods through which they can correlate them and they can uh, like they can find the universal approach in your work they can find the universal approach in your work ok. This is very important, so use uh, relevant examples, yes of course relevant is very much important, relevant examples they are really very important, what which kind of examples relevant, yes what is your professionalism, maintain professional and respectful tone, you cannot write uh, any uh, like a local language to it because it has to be in a very different manner, colloquial language should be avoided, it should be formal, it should be formal and uh, revision editing for example, uh, for example, if I say uh, for a, uh, if I say an email, if I talk about an email, now what in uh, that condition, how are you going to write down the salutation, in that condition you after like while writing the salutation, if you know some person, you will say dear if you know that person dear Dr. Gupta or if you know that person dear Dr. Divya, right. Suppose if you do not know that person dear Dr. Gupta. So, these are two ways or there could be dear ma'am or sir. But it is much better if you can write down address the person with name. So, remember after that revising and editing, yes I told you about the same thing earlier also that first draft, second draft and third draft. In that condition you must know that first draft will always have the comprehensive, the comprehensive, comprehensiveness and fullness and fullness of facts, right this is very important. Second part if it is a second draft, first draft you can say, second draft if it is like that then it must have the improving, it must have the improving in first draft. What are the improvements that are required in that? Improvements 
in first draft right and what are the improvements in form most of the time in language and by trimming i am going to write this particular thing trimming trimming what is the trimming part that means skip irrelevant information irrelevant data which is not at all required i told you avoid redundant uh, part from this then further the third category that is the third or the final draft the final draft will be related to something that is that is uh, uh, most of the time make document make documents uh, authoritative authoritative and able to and able to communicate able to communicate the or convince the convince the code of law this is really very important right when it comes to revision and drafting you must prepare three drafts first of all first draft first draft would, would have an elaborate collection of all the uh, like comprehensive elaboration or comprehensive approach towards the fullness of the facts whatever you are trying to uh, like uh, convey through collect all the facts in that first draft second draft after collecting the files you can improve them improvise them because by using the trimming method trimming method means you are going to just remove the irrelevant data which is not at all required most of the time then further the third one is final draft in this final draft you must know that whenever we talk about this final draft that is you must talk about the documents in an authoritative and uh, like convincing the code of law so this is these are three things then further we have grammar and proofreading yes grammar and proofreading in that condition please be very particular about punctuation mark punctuation mark be very particular about using correct grammar or you can say punctuation mark correct metaphorical metaphorical and syntactical pattern syntactical pattern then using passive voice most of the time and above all yes above all try to use the correct grammar avoid committing errors right so these are few things which are really very important now let's come up with how to draft an fir right when it comes to first information report when it comes to first information report you must know that this is the report which is created by police officers when the person you can say the plaintiff i'm talking the word p l a i n t i w f plaintiff and the other one is defendant so whenever the plaintiff actually come up with any kind of complaint to the police officer suppose if i have i want to uh, complain against the theft that has taken place the burglars broke into my house yesterday night and i want to complain in in uh, new agra uh, police station suppose in that condition if i want to just give that fir so what will happen i will certainly give first of all the application and in that application i will include all these things name of the activity then name of the accused date along with time of offence and place of offence so these are few things where i am going to discuss i am going to write an application once that application uh, is submitted in that police station remember that after the after that tehreer or we can say the script that is prepared so after that uh, application the tehreer or you can say the script people from police department they create the fir they write their own first information report that is fir so in that condition this fir is created FIR is a doc document prepared by police organization in South Asian and a South East Asian countries including Myanmar India Bangladesh Pakistan when they receive information about the commission of the cognizable offense or in Singapore when the police receive information 
So, now I am going to tell you how they are written, how this FIR would be written. I have given you one situation when I am trying to, this is the format and in the next uh, slide I would be coming up with the writing portion that how is it written. First of all, first information report the heading, second first section where first section details of the complainant. Details of the complainant means like suppose Dr. Devya Gupta, name of that person, address, then contact information, phone number, email. So, you will write all these three things, right? So, suppose I am taking up the, somebody, uh, Dr. Uh, Devakar, Dr. Devakar Bharadwaj, right, for your information. Now, in this condition, if I say uh, address, address Dayalbag, Agra, fine. Now, in this condition, contact information 9634870705. Now, suppose this is the number and details of the accused. Accused, suppose like uh, whenever we are going to talk about the accused person, you are going to make the details over here, then details of the F offense. And uh, suppose if I say offense, what is the F offense in that condition? Theft. And uh, date and time of the offense, suppose today is, uh, uh, let us take the example, yesterday's night, then 24th November 23, right. Then location of the offense, Dayalbagh, Agra, clear. I am going to write all these things, description of the offense, clear and concise description of the alleged crime. That means, I am going to tell you each and everything about this thing that at, uh, at 10 o'clock evening, 10 o'clock, at 10 o'clock in the night, some burglars stole or broke into the house on 24th November 2023, right. So, this is clear concise description of the alleged crime and evidence, list of evidence, certain things uh, some neighbors might have seen, so the names of the neighbors would also be there and uh, witness statements would also be included in this. So, all these things would be done by the side of uh, the uh, municipal, like you can see the police authorities, remember. So, they would uh, definitely contact these witness people, the witnesses of the same thing. Then uh, additional information, if you want to come up with any kind of additional information, that means like uh, if you have looked somebody like his appearance maybe how he looked, the uh, burglar who entered or who broke into your house. So, you can just talk about his uh, brown, uh, you can say wheatish complexion, wheatish complexion with bald and then uh, uh, brown jacket, brown jacket. Then what are the articles that were stolen, you can talk about those things and uh, some identification if you can definitely give uh, some, some kind of like correlation or some kind of like uh, if you have some kind of uh, uh, you can say the evidence against it, then you can definitely talk about all those things over here. Conclusion, the complainant hereby request appropriate legal action against the accused based on the above information. So, you have given your FIR you have given your application. On the basis of these details, he has finalized like on the basis of your application, he has installed, he has incorporated the or created this FIR. Now, this FIR is first information report on the basis of which after this FIR, this FIR would be given to, would be sent to court and then the court proceedings, the legal proceedings will take place and in that legal proceedings, what you, what you have to understand is you must remember that on the basis of this FIR only, the court authorities are going to take action. So, the signature of the complainant and date would be mentioned at the end, right. So, this is what FIR, how FIR is should be written, should be written in a concise and precise manner. Yes, I have told you, police station name, FIR number date and time of the incident, complainant, address of the complainant, contact number of the complainant, then uh, details of the incident, then uh, these are the things where how you can make it comprised, yes. So, complainant's uh, full name, residence of the complainant's address, 
hereby hereby lodge this FIR regarding the following incident. So, you are going to trace the following incident over here. Then on date at approximately time I was described. So, describe the situation briefly walking home at work. So, whether you were there in the house or not during this time I observed. So, this is the way you are going to draft draft this is the way you are going to draft a concise FIR right. So, describe the incident example a theft assault details of are as follows ok. So, further you are going to describe the suspect remember the suspect provide a brief description of the suspects. If there is one suspect somebody if, if you doubt someone right. So, if you know that person may be like from your office may be somewhere else then you can definitely mention the height, build, clothing uh, etcetera whatever like I have mentioned in my previous one like let me come up to the back slide where I told you that vintage complexion, bald, then brown jacket, you can definitely come up with all those things because they are really very important when it comes to the description side, right. So, this description means suspects. If you identify that suspect, please mention the height, build, clothing, etcetera. Sequence of events, provide a chronological account of what happened starting from the beginning, right. Look, uh, like look, uh, while I was coming back to my home, I understood I uh, got to know that uh, that, that, that uh, thieves have or uh, burglars have broke into my house and uh, then I found several things open, my closets were open and I found several things missing over here. Therefore, one by one sequence method, you cannot go on with reverse chronological method, no reverse chronological method is avoided is avoided. Remember when it comes to CV, yes reverse chronological method is used where you start from the present and go to the back side. But when it goes to FIR, when it goes to all these legal documents, they will be definitely written on the basis of chronological order. What happened first and then second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth like this. So, please be very particular about this. Witnesses if any, if there is any kind of witness who has been the uh, who has been like uh, present over there please try to come up with that items stolen damaged if any list any items stolen or damaged during the incident if applicable so you must have that idea how these things are done what are the items stolen suppose if i say gold ring sometimes uh, you can say uh, some electronic electronic gadgets then you will talk about uh, if, if there is some kind of valuable things then definitely um, TV and uh, then uh, AC because since all these things you have been out for uh, half or for one week therefore like whole things were stolen gold ornaments must be must be must be much better not only let me clear this a little bit and clear gold ornaments because at the sight of this obviously you would not be able to tell each and everything that which gold ornament has been stolen. But when you say gold ornaments obviously you would be compiling everything that you have lost in that burglars where in that uh, like theft. So, any other relevant information that you require include any additional information assist the police in the in their investigation. Now, actions taken by complainant like suppose if I am the complainant, I am the plaintiff, I am going to fire uh, like I am the complainant in that condition, what are the steps that I have taken? If somebody is wounded at my home or guard is wounded at my home, what action have I uh, have I taken in that condition? In that condition, what am I going to tell you that I have uh, there is uh, like my guard was wounded, badly wounded, I have taken them to uh, taken him to the hospital where uh, proper treatment has been uh, like uh, taken care or proper care has been taken of that person and then you can talk about the action uh, like uh, we have got the recordings of uh, you can say that uh, the complainant has the recordings of CV uh, of uh, CCTV camera that are that are implanted at various places in the house so that it may find uh, several clues of the whole thing. So, these are the actions which were taken by the complainant. 
and then further you can talk about the request for investigation. Now, this is the last part almost. What is the request? I request the police station as if I told you the case New Agra. So, I request the police station name you can talk about New Agra police station. Okay. So, this is the whole thing to thoroughly investigate this matter and take appropriate legal action against the perpetrators. Clear? So, because you do not know actually who were they, but they you have little bit identified and recognized their, uh, uh, their clothing, the, how they looked, their physical appearance, their facial expressions, all those things. So, at the end declaration, I declare that the information provided above is true to my best of my knowledge. Look, whenever you go for any kind of legal document, beta, what my legal uh, document says that whatever I am writing is true to my knowledge. And that is the reason if you are writing FIR, if you are writing case laws, if you are writing uh, statutes, if you are using any relevant examples, cite them properly because your signature is at the end. Okay? Your signature is at the end which clearly indicates that everything that you are doing is true to your knowledge and that is the reason why while writing the FIR also if you are the complaint complainant then your signature with date will also be there. So, be very particular about authentic data that you have. Signature of the complainant, complainants, signature, date all these things will be included. Then further we have concise, how are we going to make the word concise? Concise, concision you can say how can you make it more concise? Stick to facts. Whatever facts you have, stick to them. Include only essential facts, unnecessary details. Avoid using unnecessary details and emotional language and speculations. And I would like to tell you that avoid repetition of thoughts also. Many people use repetition of thoughts. You, many people try to repeat each and everything time and again just to create the interest of the readers. But that is sometimes like very difficult to go on because people are people do not have that much time they are already busy they do have certain other uh, important uh, like assignments to do some important deadlines. So, avoid using repetition avoid redundancy redundancy is again using the avoid repetition of information use precise language to convey necessary details. Then over verbose are not like too many legal maxims are also avoided too many too many legal maxims are avoided which is really very important. Use bullet points and numbered list because many times in history you do not write uh, like long long paragraphs are written, but when we talk about uh, the uh, kind of you can say. Uh, the kind of any uh, work or any legal document please try to be very precise to be very precise and concise in such a manner where you cannot actually where you write in bullet points list of stolen items 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 like this you can just mention the list of the items use bullet points numbered or you can definitely use this like this. Okay? So, eliminate legalese legalese too much of legalese legal terminologies please avoid using them that will definitely make it concise and how are you going to make it clear clarity clarity will be from simple language yes from simple language you can bring about a clarity and uh, how are you going to bring that clarity yes formation of outline first of all you must talk about formation of outline so whatever your outline is of the whole scene then arrangement of facts, arrangement of facts, chronological manner. Okay. Third one style and language, style and language because they are really very important. Fourth you must talk about physical characteristics, physical characteristics, okay. physical characteristics. 5 yes of course, you must use the after physical characteristics you must try to come up with something where uh, where the paragraphs are properly written then uh, proper margins should be there that will bring about a clarity in your work margins are there then numbering is there numbering is there 
uh, yes of course proper margins i have told you and uh, a proper standard paper standard paper on which it is written on which on which it has to be print out like i mean to say it is not uh, it is not the way where you are going to uh, like uh, get the print out on any any paper any low quality paper but the standard quality of paper is required if you want to uh, bring about a clarity in this so formation of outline then you must know about the arrangement arrangement of facts and then further you must talk about style style and language then further physical physical characteristics physical characteristics means proper margin should be there proper you must have the paragraphs then uh, you must have the proper standard paper and then numbering numbering is also really very important when it goes on with that so clear and simple language along with this yes this is really good chronological order we have already discussed present the events in chronological order making the clear when each incident occurred this helps the readers follow the sequence of events then we talk about use standard formatting and uh, standard formatting yes fir headings sections make it easier to law enforcement who whoever is reading make it very clear for him to understand each and everything okay so you must know how to present it in a proper format explicit details you must know about explicit details elaborate detailing of everything clearly state who reported the crime when and where so me so what do you mean to say that what happened where it happened when it happened who are affected so these are explicit details which are really required so who when where it happened who the alleged perpetrators is or are any identifying information about the victim or witnesses so this brings clarity then cogency how are you going to bring about a cogency in that now provide sufficient details while being concise fir so sufficient details are required yes then logical flow would be there logical flow according to the format according to the uh, unity of thoughts then uh, coherence yes so logical information logical portrayal of information in a proper manner when it comes to logical flow yes you must talk about how this incident happened when this incident happened where it happened what is the time who were affected so everything will be included in that part so this is your responsibility to draft it in a very logical manner maybe sometimes in a number format namta sometimes in bullet format sometimes in paragraph form but that too in a short way avoiding all those legal uh, uh, maxims too many of legal maxims will be overpoured and will create it more ambiguous so avoid that ambiguity part then further avoid speculations stick to facts and avoid making assumptions and speculations if certain information is not known or verified clearly indicate so and use precise terminologies that is again a very important thing terminologies which are very precise and then further we have simplicity of structure how are we going to make it simple i have already told you that you are going to make it simple by standard sections subheadings by clarity in headings and logical order now in this logical order you must know how to go on with that because these things are really very much important and uh, this we have already imported uh, incorporated in the whole thing that how headings and subheadings are there then subheadings needs the details of the offense description of the offense date and time so that this will have the to the point answer of everything standard section should be there introduction should be there logical order so logical order is also required this brings simplicity clarity coherence concise work so now come up with drafting what is drafting actually drafting is the key elements of or key skills of drafting are like if i talk about these three this is appropriate tone try to come up with appropriate tone second you have to be very much perfect about correct usage and third concise style 
when these three things are very much important remember and what is the golden rule of drafting golden rule of drafting anything is that's a very simple thing that golden rule is help your help the readers help the readers get the content quickly and easily help the readers to get the content quickly and easily you can actually change your position change yourself with exchange your position with with reader then only you would be able to draft very well okay so if you would be able to compare yourself or put yourself in the place of the reader 100% you would definitely be able to come up with perfect drafting uh, style design should be conceived first of all design should be conceived in a proper manner then you must talk about none of the facts should be avoided or admitted none of the facts like i mean to say if some irrelevant fact is there you must know to avoid them and due care and attention should be paid on should be placed on placed on legal interpretation you must talk about legal interpretation legal interpretation because this is really very important when it comes to clarity and sustainability then competent knowledge of each, each and everything competent knowledge is also required of related matter and yes of course if somebody is using the legal dictionary that would certainly not suffice the purpose so uh, you should not write all those uh, like uh, legal terms which are very much difficult to understand so the goal like if i say if i talk about the grammatical accuracy if i give this word this this particular sentence mr jones is an attorney is an attorney with the firm already since 6 years now if i talk about grammatical accuracy do you find the sentence correct come on tell me mr jones is an attorney with the firm say already since 6 years which tense is this which tense is this present and since is used present perfect continuous so in that condition what would be the rule according to it is it is or has been has been right and what about since since for since 6 o'clock or since 2016 and for 6 years so therefore here we are going to change for then only the sentence would be correct right so this is grammatical accuracy please be very much perfect particular about grammatical accuracy methods of legal writing now these are methods of legal writing where cornell method is there outlining method charting method sentence method i have already explained that there is uh, there are like few methods cornell method this method is based on two columns that is left hand side will contain the keyboard the key aspect and the right hand side will explain description of everything outlining method involves series of topics and sub topics so headings and subheadings subheadings okay then further we have cut charting methods that is rows and columns rows and columns you must know that uh, in this rows and columns method you can draft it in a very concise manner sentence method yes obviously a new concept and topic separate line or uh, an information can be numbered if easily so these are few methods through which one can go on with legal writing in a concise and comprehensive manner so these are brief writings where person can be clear effective language point wise description should be there it should be based on facts no scope no imagination that means no emotions are required only facts only facts right then for the use third person pronoun i'm just repeating everything that we have discussed earlier so use third person pronoun it is desirable to maintain the title of the matter in hand that means the title should be on the hand no subscription like yours sincerely faithfully they are avoided clear 
to read and underline the important sentence and law points. That means par you can turn up 1, 2, 3 or bullets, use bullets form. Mention the annexure, page number, brackets at the end while citation please be very much clear about those things. At the end name, signature of the person because you are going to authenticate it. True to my knowledge, this is really very important, authentication is important. Yeah. So, these are few steps to go on with conclusion, yes, concise, clarity, cogency, simplicity of structure and overall impact. So, with these things obviously my dear learners, you all will be able to make your word efficient and impressive. And in that condition, you can make it by eliminating redundancy, by focused messages, you can definitely make it clear and concise. Clarity could be made like by making it universal understanding, by avoiding legalese, too many of legal uh, terminologies, minimizing ambiguity and further you can make it cog cognate by uh, using logical reasoning and by making it more impressive persuasive through understanding, thorough understanding should be there. Then further, how can you bring about the simplicity of the structure, logical organization is required, effective navigation is required, enhanced comprehension is there, required when you go for case laws, when you write uh, FIRs, when you write brief study, etc. So, overall impact should be, yes, overall impact should be practical applications, effective legal systems and powerful legal tool you must know. So, these are the references that I have referred till now, Aspen Handbook, Writer's Practical Reference, Just Writing and then Legal Writing in Plain English, Writing to Please. So, you can refer these books in order to hone your skills of learning. Yes, so these are the references. I am Dr. Divya Gupta, an Assistant Professor at GLA University. Uh, signing off for now, I think that with these kind of lectures, you all will be able to perfect yourself in uh, writing skills. Thank you everyone.